I'll have to be honest with you, first thing I'm going to mention right up front is, is it's free. Uh, I, I like this, this, this service when, when it's free because, you know, you can tie up a lot of money in, in different services and from experience I found out that a, you, sometimes you can pay a lot of money and you, you may not be getting that much out of it. Good afternoon, welcome to Grain TV. My name is Cody Bills. Today is the 31st here and we saw planting intentions as well as quarterly grain stocks move the market sharply. Following the report, let's take a look at the grain hedge trading platform and see where we closed off the day. Corn futures trading down 18 and a quarter cent with a very directional trade following the report. Soybeans ends up closing up only five cents here, but that really doesn't do justice to the kind of volatility that we saw in this contract following the report. We were trading higher, we were then trading lower, went through lows uh, that we printed back here on the 18th before closing back in the positive here. We had a 30 cent range in the two minutes following the release of this report. So very volatile trade here for soybeans. And then of course Chicago wheat here down 17 and a half cents here on the day, really erasing a lot of the gains that we saw during yesterday's trade. Let's go over the prospective planting report numbers as this was one of the major things uh, that influenced the trade prices today. When, we, when you look at the overall numbers, you'll notice the actual numbers for corn that were released today was 89.199 million acres for corn. You'll notice that that is higher than the Reuters poll, higher than Landworth, Informa, as well as higher than Farm Futures Magazine. Pretty much catching the market by surprise and giving a very strong reason for people to get out there and start selling the futures market. That's one of the reasons why we had such a directional trade here in the corn market. When you look at soybeans though, you'll notice we came out with 84.635 million acres. This is lower than the Reuters poll, it's lower than uh, Landworth, uh, pretty much lower than all the other uh, expectations here and, and, uh, and surveys by other, um, by other groups. And, and this, this caught the market by surprise too. Immediately following the report, we were trading higher. Those gains were erased and then we started move, moving lower there uh, within two minutes of the release of the report. Then we turned right around and finally found a little bit of stability in there, but a very, very volatile trade here uh, for soybeans. And you'll notice that this is an increase year over year, uh, but when you look at it compared to what the USDA or what the traders were expecting, uh, just ended up, ended up surprising the market. And I think uh, there's really this, uh, this kind of tug of war. You have a bullish surprise on the market, but you have an overall relatively bearish uh, tone to this contract. And I think that that was kind of what was trying to get worked through um, within the couple minutes following the report. Let's talk a little bit about quarterly grain stocks. The one thing that was worth highlighting here is corn uh, quarterly grain stocks as of March 1st. You'll notice we had higher endings or higher stocks here at 7.745 billion bushels compared to 7.609 billion bushels that were expected by analysts. This is a pretty significant amount of grain. What this means is that uh, one of two things, either uh, the USDA is understating the size of the crop last year or feed and residual use is, uh, is likely to be a little bit lower than what they're currently uh, penciling into the, ba the balance sheet. So bottom line here is this is uh, affecting old crop corn. When you get this kind of a uh, double whammy here with uh, new crop acres higher than analysts were expecting and you have higher grain stocks for old crop, what you get is a very directional trade. And let's take a look at the daily chart and see what sort of damage has been done. You'll notice we are hanging up there right around that 200 day moving average. Uh, people think there's a possibility for corn to move higher today. We just did not see that. You can see we're now trading down kind of closer to the lows. Uh, and, and you can see that we're, we're really continuing that downward trend. It'll be interesting to see if we get continuation in tomorrow's report. I wouldn't be surprised if we kind of start to find a little bit of a bottom here, at least for the short term, following the very sharp move that we uh, experienced after the report. Just to give you an idea of how directional this trade was, we just didn't come up for air. This is a five minute chart of the May corn futures. Anyone can view this. If you have the Grain Hedge Standard trading platform, that's exactly what this chart has come off of. 
Um, but basically what you're seeing here is a report comes out, market drops very sharply and uh, just unable to rally back at all. Um, one, one thing I wanted to talk about is, is of course, yesterday uh, we did talk about options a little bit, short dated options. This is an option a, expiring on April 2nd uh, on the May contract. And what we noticed is that this is a, a 390 put and that it was trading somewhere right around five cents. Uh, yesterday, it was really only good for about a day, but you'll notice that three, uh, that, that five cent 390 put increased to about 14 cents here today. So this is the kind of protection that you can get when you go into these very volatile market events, when you get these sort of uh, events that could cause significant risk to your overall profitability at the end of the year, sometimes it pays to go in there take a look at what sort of short dated options are available, take a look at that, in this case, an April 2nd uh, put, uh, and see what it would trade for. I mean, this is the sort of thing that could, could have gotten you into a nice short uh, futures position at 390 here when it expires on the 2nd. Of course, you know, this, if it didn't work out, if the market rallied here, you'd be out five cents. That's kind of the risk of that sort of trade. And of course, futures and options trading isn't appropriate for all uh, for all people out there and we can kind of talk about that if you do have any interest in uh, in using the grain hedge standard trading platform we'll just identify whether or not uh, these sort of tools are right for you but I just wanted to show you uh, of course we highlighted this on last show I just wanted to show you kind of what this means uh, when you extrapolate that out one day uh, past the report uh, let's talk a little bit about soybeans. You'll notice here, uh, soybeans, uh, big range here today, big, uh, big wicks on the end of this candle. Uh, this is a daily uh, chart. You'll notice that each, each bar represents one day worth of price activity. And you can see where uh, we dropped right below that 953 support uh, that we had back on the 18th. And it almost has that feeling uh, that in the chaos following the release of the report, when people are digesting numbers, when, uh, when regular traders who don't have access to immediate data feeds are being hung up on the website and it's not loading properly, it almost had the feeling that the market uh, traded in the exact opposite way that you would expect uh, following this report. It almost went down right below those lows. It almost feels like someone was out there stop hunting uh, when there was a lack of liquidity and a real um, a flurry of orders in the market. So. Uh, of course, we ended up closing strong on the day. I guess from my perspective, I look at this trade uh, action today, I would not be surprised if we start to move higher here with these acreage numbers. I think that it's very possible that we get up right around that 20 day moving average. We kind of work through it. I don't necessarily think this is the start of a bullish um, move long term, but we could get some follow through in the following days here. Uh, so just be wary of that if you're out there trading soybeans. Uh, this is the one minute chart and this is what I was talking about, that very, very uh, volatile reaction following the report. We traded higher, then we immediately traded lower in the second minute following the release of the report. Finally able to find a little bit more stability here and close positive on the day. So it is does look a little bit positive here for soybeans. Uh, it is good to see. Um, this is the wheat chart. The wheat chart really very directional as well. Just started selling off in the beginning part of the day, uh, really erasing all of yesterday's gains. So uh, this is it's gonna be interesting to see what happens with wheat. It's just very uh, big roller coaster ride. Uh, you know, it almost has that feeling that we're kind of hammering out a base down around this level, but we'll have to see if there's continuation. Maybe we'll be able to find some support down around the 20 and 50 day moving averages uh, that seem to be the lows that we've really been able to kind of hammer in since the beginning of February. Other than that, guys, that wraps up today's show. If you do want a grain hedge standard demo to see what it's like to view these live markets as they trade, go to grainhedge.com, go up in the top right hand corner, there's a button that says uh, 14 day free trial, click on it, put in your name and number, we'll be in touch with you, we'll provide you with the educational material you need so that you feel comfortable and get the most out of that demo. Thanks a lot for tuning in and remember uh, there is substantial risk of loss in trading futures and options and futures trading is not appropriate for all investors so uh, do, do consider that before you uh, think about getting into futures and options. Thanks a lot for tuning in, we'll see you here on Wednesday.